Hello everyone, here PSST.1. Today we speak with Noah Norman. He founded Hard Work Party, a multidisciplinary studio based in Brooklyn, New York. His works are focused on uh, interactive installation most of the time, but also scenic design, all the kind of stuff that you need for a show. But you will see all this stuff, so enjoy! How did you start with visuals? I was working on projects that were uh, in, I think, probably the first visual projects I did was in virtual reality, and this was like 2002 maybe. I had an opportunity to work in a cave, which is a virtual reality system that's stereographic projection, shutter glasses, tracking that makes the perspective uh, converge for the primary user and the cave that I worked in had had gloves and like it was a whole pretty impressive 3D setup in a room that was probably like uh, four meters by four meters cube you know uh, and I originally worked uh, in that as a as a writer um, so now that I'm thinking about it I guess I didn't really program graphics for that but that got me into thinking about working in a 3D context and I, uh, later on I was an audio programmer for that and then directly after that, that audio programming that I was doing, uh, which was for uh, my music study, led me to uh, doing audio-visual performances with some of the, the 3D stuff that I had understood from that. I suppose the first like really serious graphics programming that I've done in the last 15 years began like two years ago when I started using Touch Designer. Uh, previous to that, I had done um, some light control things with Jitter, uh, Max MSP Jitter, um, and I had been controlling LEDs with that and uh, doing a little bit of like video presentation stuff with that, but nothing really serious in a 3D context in any way. And then uh, at the time uh, that I did that, uh, an interactive video project, I looked at Touch Designer, it was like 2009, and I got scared uh, because there was like no documentation at all. And uh, I didn't come back to Touch Designer until uh, maybe 2015, like, like a little over two years ago. What is it your main style and inspiration? Uh, well, my main style is different if we're talking about commercial work versus artistic work. So. Yeah, it is definitely divided. I think for commercial work, uh, a lot of the, um, the the stuff that I've done is pretty colorful and dynamic. And I try to, because a lot of commercial work involves presenting um, some kind of message. Typically, if there's somebody paying for it up, up the chain, that they want to often work with video, which is rectangular and they want to convey some idea or present something that's already been created in a new way. And I try to find ways to break the usual relationship that people have with a rectangular screen. I don't want someone to see the presentation of normal video content and, 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 and do what your brain will normally do, which is just be like, oh yeah, that's, that's a video rectangle. I'm used to, it's a TV, it's a projection, whatever it is, it's always, landscape or you know something like that rectangle anything that you can do that will break that normal relationship that people have to video is a big step and so whenever I have commercial work that involves video that's something I try to do um, when I'm doing personal work it tends to be much more um, intense and uh, and uh, have have a lot less um, dynamics in terms of color I try to present things in, in, our, in an artistic context that uh, destabilize people's relationship to their trust of their senses. So I try to create things that um, point out your inability to really know what it is you're looking at. One of the things I've been interested in recently is, is the wagon wheel effect or, or stroboscopic lighting on moving things. Uh, where even with a camera, you know, the wagon wheel effect, if a 
car goes by, the wheel is spinning. At a certain rate, the shutter of the camera and the rate of the spin of the car, the wheel will make the wheel appeal to stop and then go backwards. Um, and that's an artifact. Uh, you can do the same thing with a, with a strobing light. Um, you can do the same thing in, in generated video. The first thing I ever did in Touch Designer was just a video that was spinning platonic solids and exposing them to a strobe in a 3D context. And in the render, you got these wagon wheel effects and things like that. And you get this kind of look onto something that is actually not doing anything. It's just the same object all the time, but it looks different. Um, depending on the rate at which it's presented to your brain. I think that stuff's really interesting. I, I would love to do more with uh, the actual optical effects. Uh, there's some people doing some really amazing artwork with uh, things that take advantage of the tricks your brain will play on you. But I, I would love to do more of that in kind of the physical space is really what I want to do. Okay. It's more to reproduce uh, the reality in digital. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I went down the rabbit hole for a little bit of, of post-processing as it's done in AAA games, like the type of effects that make a rendered scene look real. Um, and I think if you can master those talents, just like you can, if you can with painting, you can then present something that is obviously unreal in a way that looks so true that someone's relationship to it is different than if it was rendered in a way that looked unreal. So if you just use like a Fong shader and you present a, a, a crazy object in a, in let's say you composite it into a, an actual shot of a room, this is what a lot of people do on Houdini and stuff like that, uh, is track motion matching cameras and stuff like that, and then comping the image into the scene uh, to look as real as possible. If you do that without trying to do something that's like a spectacle, but you do something that's like um, surreal and kind of subtle, I think there's a certain uh, unease that comes from viewing something like that that I'm really interested in. Uh, and I think of like, you know, Max Ernst or like, you know, surrealism is, is you know, in a way like best served by presenting it in the most realistic context possible. So I was really interested in, in post-processing for uh, rendering for a little while. I tried to get the realest thing I could, but at this point, um, I'm not really going down that path anymore because it's a whole black hole that you just, I, I can't, I can't give it the time that it needs. Have you some advice? Two pieces of advice. The first one is don't let yourself off the hook. Like one of the things that I hear from a lot of people who are very talented in this field but like have decided what they can and can't do is like, oh, I, I can't do that stuff or that's too complicated for me or something like that. Don't let yourself off the hook. Yes, you can. There's never been a time in history where more information was available than it is now and tutorials and like training and, and, and uh, if there's something that, that you think is a tool that you could use or a th world you could explore or something like that and you've counted yourself out because that's too complicated for me or too technical, no. You can do it. Uh, so start with that mindset. And then the second thing is, as soon as you go in, when you're, when you're first starting out especially, but when you're going into something new, there's a tendency to have a goal in mind and that having that goal in mind when you first begin research on something that is challenging and technical and complicated and new causes you to panic because you don't understand and you the entire time your brain is saying i need to understand this in order to be done so that i can do the thing that i need to do and, and move on even if it's just writing like one line of code or something like that it's like just this line you start reading the documentation in this, in this state of panic. Oh, I just need to, uh, maybe I can copy paste and just try this. Uh, I don't need to understand it. I just need to get it done so I can move on to the next line. That is a shortcut to a spiral to nowhere. The right way to learn any of these things that are like crazy complicated and scary and whatever is to just take a deep breath. Don't worry about the goal. Slow down and just try to understand and be in the moment. Just the one thing that you're working on, just try to understand that. 
just the one line that you're working on, make sure that you understand what you're doing. Just do that one thing at a time. It's like building the foundation of a house. If you're like, oh, I just need to get this brick done, and the wall's gonna fall over before you're even finished. Lay the brick carefully, and you, I promise you will finish faster than you would if you did it as fast as you could, because if you do it as fast as you can, you're gonna build a house that's gonna fall down, and then you're like, all right, on to the next house. You know, I did that one that, well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if you're super creative and your aesthetic is like, I'm a mess, okay. And that's totally cool. I know a lot of people that do that. That's very punk and that's cool. But if you actually like, want to build the skills that are going to lead you to, to be able to participate and and, and uh, contribute and and do express yourself in this this set of digital tools which are very challenging and understandably like scary don't try to skip to level four and then skip to level eight so that you can make stuff at level 11 like the guy that you like you'll never that's not the way to do it you can't jump up a staircase like take the first step one at a time and relax. Just be cool with the fact that you got up three steps today because that, if you, if you get up those three steps the right way, you never have to go back. But if you jump up four steps, you're going you're gonna to revisit steps one, two, and three at some point. But it's not going to be a good time for you because you're going to think you're on level four and you're not. 